Jamie Ginn, the 50-year-old president of the Rebels MC, passed away on October 10, 2023, while in custody at the Perth Watch House. His arrest on charges related to drugs and firearms led to a tragic turn of events when he reportedly suffered a seizure. Despite the swift efforts of first responders, Ginn could not be revived, and he died in police custody at the police watch house on Fitzgerald Street in Northbridge. Ginn was apprehended at an Angara property for violating a firearm prohibition order. He was due to face Jundalop Magistrates Court next day, on two charges of acquiring, possessing or using a firearm or major firearm part, a prohibited firearm accessory or ammunition, and two charges of possessing a prohibited drug. Police later confirmed that there was no nurse on shift at the Perth Watch House that night, as the one on duty had called in sick, while a replacement could not be found. Ginn's arrival was deemed a routine entrance with no issues flagged, and subsequently, he was confined to a cell. At approximately 7 p.m., while within his cell, he experienced a medical episode, suspected to be a seizure, prompting an immediate response from police officers. Despite the swift efforts, including CPR, the medical emergency faced by Ginn proved insurmountable. Ginn was responsive at the time when police first arrived in his cell, and the absence of a medical nurse at this critical moment added to the challenges faced by first responders and the law enforcement. Ginn could not be revived, and he died in police custody at the police watch house on Fitzgerald Street in Northbridge. Police was also unsure if Ginn was still alive when paramedics arrived and took over the scene, following which, and within minutes Rebel's boss was declared dead around 8 p.m. In a statement, police said Ginn was seen by a nurse on arrival to the watch house, however the nurse on the next shift called in sick. However, all staff are proficient in first aid. Ginn was observed to be having what appeared to be a seizure. Staff placed him in the recovery position and called an ambulance. When Ginn stopped breathing, they immediately began CPR. While WA police are satisfied nothing more could be done to save Ginn, it now falls to the coroner to ultimately make their findings in respect to his death. Police was not aware of any pre-existing medical conditions with Ginn, and that a post-mortem would determine his cause of death. All deaths in custody are automatically referred to the coroner for an inquest, with the findings made public, however the hearings can take years to commence due to a backlog of cases. Hours before Ginn's death, the police had confirmed his arrest as part of a targeted strategy aimed at curbing bikey activity. This initiative was sparked by a recent drive-by shooting in Baldivis, where a group of rebels bikies had fired upon a Mongols bikey, posing a public threat to innocent residents. President's arrest was intended to convey a robust message to bikey clubs engaging in public violence, emphasizing that authorities would respond forcefully. The focus was on starting from the top, particularly targeting individuals in leadership roles such as President, Vice President, or Sergeant at Arms. Those assuming such positions would be subject to significant legal measures, including firearms prohibition orders, anti-consorting provisions, and insignia laws, making them the primary targets of law enforcement. Since its establishment in 2020, the Perth Watch House or PWH has been gaining prominence as one of Perth's discreet and unconventional law enforcement facilities. The Perth Watch House is one of Western Australia's most controversial, largest, and modern police lockups. It has borne witness to the apprehension of killers, celebrities, sports stars, bikies and some of Perth's most notorious criminals. This watch house, is a facility operated by law enforcement agencies to detain individuals temporarily and is a critical component of the criminal justice system, providing a temporary holding facility where individuals are processed and detained during the early stages of legal proceedings. It plays a crucial role in maintaining public safety and ensuring that individuals accused of offenses are treated in accordance with their legal rights. It is believed that the station is equipped with state-of-the-art technologies, and extensive medical support in the facility stands as a critical component of law enforcement infrastructure. Prior to detainees being confined, they undergo a comprehensive body scan designed to detect any concealed drugs or weapons. With 144 strategically placed cameras, the watch house meticulously monitors every move made within its confines, ensuring a high level of surveillance and security. 
Despite having these measures in place, it is challenging to comprehend how the police overlooked Gin's underlying medical conditions before confining him to a cell. Furthermore, it was previously confirmed that a doctor is always present at the watch house. However, it has now been revealed that not a single nurse was on duty during this critical incident. The Rebels Motorcycle Club has once again taken center stage in news and media, emerging as a symbol of fascination and discord within the bikey subculture. Recent developments vividly depict the trials and controversies encircling the organization, with a keen focus on the destinies of its leaders. Gin's death has had a big impact on the bikey community, creating a sense of loss that highlights the dangers and uncertainties in outlaw motorcycle clubs. This reminds us of what happened with Nick Martin, another president who was tragically shot and killed. His death emphasized the risks that leaders in the Rebels MC face. Contributing to the story, Jason Anthony Dixon, another Rebels president, currently on bail for various offenses, faces charges related to a string of drug-related offenses. His arrest last year unfolded amid a statewide crackdown on gang crime. Simultaneously, Carl Labrook, a pivotal figure within the Rebels MC, grapples with profound legal challenges. Accused of drug-related offenses and money laundering, Labrook teeters on the brink of potential imprisonment. Jamie Ginn was unwaveringly loyal to the Rebels, he stood as a steadfast pillar within the tight-knit club. His commitment went beyond mere allegiance, it was a testament to his unwavering support and camaraderie. In the world of bikey clubs, Jamie's dedication was legendary, earning him respect and trust among the bikies. The Rebels boss Jamie Ginn first came to public attention in 2014 when he was jailed for a vicious bashing that left a man with a fractured skull, a head wound, and broken arm, hand and leg. In March this year, Ginn was one of the first to be convicted of donning outlawed gang tattoos under laws brought in in 2021. Jamie alongside Jason Pettigrove and Jesse Copeman, were convicted of displaying the Rebels insignia at a pool party. Outside court he told media that where's the war on pedophiles and the war on government corruption? We no longer live in a free country, we can't have on our bodies what we want, we can't wear what we want, we can't hang around who we want. I'm not taking my tattoos off, they're staying. Where's the war on pedophiles and the war on government corruption? We no longer live in a free country, we wear what we want, we can't hang around who we want. This system. We're here to start. It is also being reported, that weeks before his death Jamie was convinced, that law enforcement had coordinated drones to surveil him. Additionally, he had suspicions that concealed cameras were strategically positioned within his residence. His apprehensions extended to a belief that undercover cars were also following him around the clock. In the coming days, it will be interesting to see what unfolds in the coroner's report and who replaces Jamie as the club's new president.